Okay, now we're going to look at this um, example and we're going to do put everything together that we've been talking about so far. Um, first of all, it says determine whether the graph is that of a function by using the vertical line test. If it is, then use the, the graph to find the following. So before we can do anything, we need to decide whether this is a function or not. And remember, it's a function if it passes the vertical line test, meaning if you were to draw a vertical line down through here, anywhere you wanted to, it would only hit the graph in one spot each time. And that is true. So this is a function, so now we can continue answering our questions. Now part A here says find its domain and its range. All right, well, in order to find the domain, we have to know domain is with the x's. It's always associated with x's. And this graph is really an interesting graph that we're going to explore later on in another chapter. But with these arrows here on the ends, that means that this is going out forever and ever and ever. So as this is coming out, it's going out forever over this direction. And then also here, it's going out forever this direction. So if I were going to label the domain here, our domain is always our x's. So think about reading from left to right. If this graph continues out here forever, it's going to start at negative infinity for its very first x value. Now remember, infinity always gets a parenthesis because we don't know where it is. Now as we move to the right, we remember left to right, as we move towards the right, we're coming across you know, every x value as we come along. And this thing is not only getting higher, but it's also going out to the right as it gets higher. So our very last x value we'd ever encounter would be here at infinity, positive infinity. So this domain is actually all real numbers. Now the range. Remember, range is dealing with y values. And this is a very interesting graph, again, like I said, because as this uh, left side here looks like it's coming down as it's going out, this is actually an exponential function. And it will never, ever actually cross the x-axis. So it's just going to follow along beside of it, getting closer and closer to x all the time, but never actually touching x. So because of that, our range would start at 0, a y value of 0, not including. And then we would have y values going all the way up, because this part of the graph continues going up, it would go all the way to infinity. Right, part B says list the intercepts, if any. So we have to talk about x-intercepts and y-intercepts. And because whenever we talked a while ago about the range, this thing will never actually touch the x-axis. It's just going to continue to go out. So there actually are no x-intercepts here. But there is a y-intercept. It's crossing the y-axis here at positive 1, so that would be the point 0, 1 for our y-intercepts. Now, part C is talking about symmetry. So remember, when we talked about symmetry, we were talking about, um, you know, like pictures on either side of an axis. So looking at the x-axis, do we have an exact copy on the other side of the x-axis? No, so there is no symmetry. What about the y-axis? Can you picture flipping this over? If we were to do that, we would not have an exact picture. So there is no y-axis symmetry. And then also origin. Origin symmetry would have to be flipped about the origin. In this case, there is none of that either. Now you could actually grab some points here and um, you know tr test those with placing you know y with negative y, x with negative x, and then both to test out your symmetry. Or we could do it just by visually looking. So there is no symmetry in this problem.